Real talk, not sponsored. This is the best shit ever. Like, it's not good for you. Don't drink it a lot. It's got like, like, I don't know, like all your sugar. Don't, don't drink it a lot, but do you recommend? So we're here today to talk about Christmas carols and go up my sick, thrifted Christmas shirt. Some girl the other day at work said she had the same one. I was like, sis, I didn't even know two of these existed still. I'm pretty sure this is from the 80s. All right. So yes, we're here to talk about Christmas carols and uh, specifically the ones that I think make very little sense. Um, maybe not necessarily the whole song, uh, often just a single line in it, but I want to discuss those lines and discuss why I think they don't make any sense. As a side note, some of these are more traditional, some of these are more modern songs. None of these are country because not a single country song makes any sense to me at all. I don't know why as a genre it exists. So if you're hoping for me to trash country songs in particular, this ain't the video. So a brief history on my relationship with Christmas carols and Christmas songs. I was raised devoutly Christian, um, which meant a lot of traditional Christmas music, a lot of Christmas carols, a lot of religious based Christmas music. Then the past few years, I haven't had a lot to do with it outside of living in America. So you hear it this time of year. But this year, I'm working for the first time in a retail situation that requires me to listen to Christmas music every day at work uh, for hours on end, which means I have heard every variation of such hot classics as Last Christmas and Winter Wonderland. And it's with this year that I have finally started to realize how some of these songs just don't make sense. And that's what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about uh, these songs that don't make sense. So I do have this little notebook here that I will be quoting directly from. So you guys have direct, direct quotations from this song and from other places that I have uh, drawn reference from. I want to start with the one song I've chosen that is expressly pretty religious. My frame of reference for why this song is ridiculous uh, takes a direct quotation from the Bible. So I do want to get this um, out there that the song is written with the assumption that you believe in Christianity and you believe in Jesus as the son and blah, blah, blah. And so coming from that frame of mind and reference, using the Bible as a counterpoint makes sense. Uh, and this is the only time in which I'm going to use the Bible as a counterpoint in this discussion. Uh, so the song in question is Mary Did You Know by Pentatonix. Uh, if you haven't heard it, it's a newer song. Um, it's kind of a bop, actually. It's a pretty good song. I uh, do enjoy it, but as a whole, the song doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so I've pulled out specifically the line, Mary, did you know your baby boy is Lord of all creation? The whole song is just them speaking to Mary, like, hey, Mary, did you know you were going to give birth to our homeboy Jesus? Because that was pretty sick of you, bro. Well, yes, of course she knew. There's a whole freaking part of the Bible where the angel visits her and is like, yo, sis, you're going to give birth to God. Ain't that sweet? And she's like, hell yeah, bro. So I've pulled out the Bible verse here. It is Luke 1, 32 and 33. For anyone who wants to follow along at home. I pulled this from the New Life version, but any version will give you the same idea. 
So this is what it said. Uh, this is a quote from what the angel was saying. He will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the place where his early father David sat. He will be king over the family of Jacob forever and his nation will have no end. So as some references for you, uh, Joseph, his, uh, Jesus's father or father figure uh, is descended from David. So that's what he means when he says his early father, David, um, meaning his, this, his, uh, his lineage through Joseph. Um, and then it also says uh, he will be king over the family of Jacob forever. Um, and Jacob is considered the patriarch of Abrahamic religions. So that's saying basically that Jesus, the son of Mary, the baby she's being told she's going to have, it's going to rule over everyone who partakes in Abrahamic religions from there on out. So I feel like that doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room. So myth busted. Yes, Pentatonix, Mary did know. Next, I want to talk about the song, Do They Know It's Christmas by Band-Aid. So the line we want to talk about specifically is there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time. Okay. So first I want to lay out the fact that there is snow in several parts of Africa. I don't know if Band-Aid got the notice that Africa is not a small village or a country. It's a continent. It's a really big continent. It snows in parts of Africa, specifically Tanzania, Morocco, Algeria, South Africa, and Lesotho. I don't know. I don't know that last one. I don't know her. I probably said that wrong. Drag me in the comments. Then they go on to say in the song, underneath that burning sun, do they know it's Christmas time at all? Do they? Do they know it's Christmas time at all in Africa under that burning sun? So I'd like to first point out that there are tons, tons of places in the world that it is warm during Christmas. It is summer during Christmas for a whole chunk of the world. Even Christian places are sometimes warm. Heck, I live in Michigan and it sometimes doesn't even snow here. My other note is 40% of Africa is Muslims. They don't care if it's Christmas. They don't care. Okay. 15% of Africa associates with no religion or other religions and a mere 45% are Christian. You think the 45% that are Christian don't know just because it's not snowing? Like they just don't have access to calendars. They don't have access to the concept of Christmas, even though they've been colonized and told about the good Lord of Jesus Christ and told all this stuff about Jesus's birth, but they just like miss the memo because it's not snowing. Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Like this song is so ridiculously narrow-minded and honestly pretty racist. And it still goes kind of hard, but I stand by my point that this song doesn't make any sense. Either they know it's Christmas or they don't care it's Christmas. I'm done eating. Is there anything in my teeth? Next I want to talk about Santa Tell Me by Ariana Grande. This is another new song. Obviously Ariana Grande has not been around long enough for it to be a classic like our much loved Mariah Carey. If you haven't heard the song, again, it's pretty good actually. And I suggest you to listen. However, the whole song is again, a song that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, so we're gonna look specifically at this line. Santa tell me if you're really there, don't make me fall in love again if he won't be here next year. Is Santa in charge of love 
and I just like didn't get the memo that like Cupid had like handed off the baton and now it's Santa's job. Like, like I feel like it's really weird to ask Santa for a boyfriend. Like, and it's like, this isn't an uncommon sentiment in Christmas music. So before you like come for me and are like, well, what about this song and this song and this song? Like, okay, first of all, those are all stupid too. But two, the demands Ariana are making in this song are much higher stakes than usual. Uh, she's not just saying, please bring me my boyfriend who I have already been long in love with and who's on the opposite side of the world to me. Or Santa, please bring home my loved ones from the war. Or like whatever those other songs are saying. Like she's literally like, Santa, if you're real, come through and bring me a whole ass boyfriend. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Why is she asking Santa for a boyfriend? Boyfriends are not presents. It takes a lot of work to build a healthy relationship, guys. Do not listen to the musings of Ariana Grande about relationships being something you can just get for Christmas. Next to the song that I think we probably all knew was gonna be on this list, uh, it's Santa Claus is Coming to Town. This is a well-loved, much, much heard, much covered song. It's a classic about Santa Claus coming to town. So the line I wanna look at is specifically, he sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. How? That's what I want. How does he know when you're sleeping? How does he know when you're awake? Is he some kind of godlike figure? Is he omnipresent? Is he all knowing? Or does he have spies? Does he have spies watching all the children in the world? Like, this is creepy and voyeuristic at best. And it's obviously, you know, it's obviously just to scare kids into behaving themselves. But. For y'all who are familiar with Elf on the Shelf, Elf on the Shelves are meant to be his watchers that report back to him about whether or not kids are behaving, right? Well, Elf on the Shelves only come out around holiday times, to my understanding. We never had one. We weren't an Elf on the Shelf kind of household. So the rest of the year, just free game. That's fine. Like the whole idea they have to behave all year is like BS. You just gotta behave while the Elf is out, right? Uh, so then, like, do only houses with elves on the shelves get watched? Does he just, like, make an educated guess on the rest of the houses? And Or do, like, only houses with elves get gifts? Like, what about the rest of the world where that's not, like, a thing? What about people like me where that wasn't a thing? It's just, that's inequality, it's unfair. It would severely limit the number of houses Santa had to go to though. So maybe it's, you know, maybe smart thinking. Some uh, good economics. Your elf on the shelf is a narc, guys. Okay, he's a snitch. Get rid of him while nobody's looking. The last song I want to talk about is Santa Baby, another classic. Uh, this song is sung in a way that is supposed to be slightly sensual, I guess, um, towards Santa Claus uh, to seduce him into bringing you nice gifts. But there's a line in this song that doesn't make any sense, okay? And that line is, fill my stocking with a duplex and checks. Checks, I understand. Who don't like some checks in your stocking? We all do. However, a duplex. A duplex is not going to fit in a stocking. A duplex is a whole house. And she doesn't make other requests that will not fit in a stocking, to be fair, such as a whole car. However, the duplex is what really doesn't make sense to me. The rest of the gifts make sense to some extent. She's like, I want money, I want jewelry, I want like a cute blue car. Santa, hook me up and if you do, I'm gonna behave next year too. And I 
wish that was where the actual lyrics that rhymed. It could have worked. It could work, but you know, this was a different time, so that's not what happened. But my problem with a duplex specifically is that a duplex is a housing unit that is usually shared by two families. It's a house that's been divided into either sideways or top to bottom. So does she want both living spaces? Does she want like basically two houses to herself? I mean, it's only one house physically, but it's like two families worth of space. Does she want like two families worth of space to herself for like her and all this cool stuff Santa brought her? Like, does she want to be the landlord of this duplex? Is she trying to like just make some money on the side? Is like a long-term investment she's asking Santa for? Like, what are her intentions with this duplex? I have so many questions. And none of them, like, just ask for a house. Like, a really nice house. Like, she could ask for a mansion, but she's like, mansion would be greedy. Better just ask for a duplex, which can totally go in my stocking. You can't put a duplex in a stocking, and why would you want a duplex anyways? Of all the housing options you could choose, that wouldn't be my first choice. So that was the last one I wanted to talk about. I guess what I'm trying to say is, a lot of Christmas music don't make no sense. And a lot of Christmas music is foolish. Even though all these songs are catchy as hell. So, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, do you agree or do you have some really great, like, explanation for any of these songs like strange lyrics am i just looking too deeply at it um you know it could have something to do with having to hear each of these songs 300 times a day for the past month maybe and let me know did i miss a song that you guys were like so sure would be in here were there any weird christmas songs with weird lyrics that don't make any sense that i just like neglected to include let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Have a good one. Bye.